Praise the Lord, everyone. Sean back here with another video for you all. Um, today, I wanted to do a video on the issue of once saved, always saved versus being able to lose salvation. Now, if you don't know me or you happen to be new to this video, I'm the person who absolutely believes you cannot ever under any circumstance lose salvation ever. And I've talked to people who believe that you can lose salvation. And I will often ask them questions and ask them, well, if you can lose salvation, you know, how many times can you commit sins before you lose it? Are there certain types of sins that will cause you to lose it and certain types of sins that won't cause you to lose it? And, you know, how long can you sin before you end up losing it? And one of the things they will say is, well, if you live in unrepented sins. And so, you know, I would pose a question. OK, well, how long can you not repent of a sin or sins before you lose that salvation? And when they say live, you know, how long can you quote unquote, keep doing these things before you lose salvation. And they will give their verses that they feel like support that you can lose salvation. But the verses that they give, they don't honestly answer the questions that's being asked. So what I wanted to do is if you could lose salvation, I wanted to show that it does not take as long as they are saying it takes in order to lose salvation because I've asked people who believe you can lose it you know do you still sin and most of them are honest just about all just about most of them who I talk to are honest enough to say well you know I'm not perfect I still sin I'm I'm growing but they'll say I don't live in sin in other words they can admit that they do things that's not 100% right but you know they're not living a life that's just you know a reckless lifestyle or a life of debauchery so I just want to show biblically the effects of sin if one could fall uh, from salvation you know how long that would take and I want to go all the way back to the account of Adam and Eve so we're going to look at Genesis 2, 16 through 17. And it reads, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now look at this. The Lord made his once known to Adam. He said, You can eat of every other tree you want. That's no problem. But this one tree right here in the middle of the garden, I don't want you to eat of it. And check this out. He says in the day, not two days, a week, a month, or if I got to keep telling you, if you keep on messing up. No, he says in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. We're going to keep going. Genesis 3, 6, and 7. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat and the eyes of them were, were and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves an apron. So God told Adam of this one particular tree, do not eat the fruit thereof, because of the day that thou eatest, thou wilt surely die. So then after that, uh, Eve is made out of Adam, out of Adam's side. Now, whether or not, you know, I'm just going to assume this happened in the sequence that it was recorded in. First, God told Adam what to do. Then he made Eve. And, you know, between that and them eating the fruit, you know, did Adam tell Eve this is what God wants us to do and what and this is what he doesn't want us to do? 
did Kai God come back and talk to them? You know, the the Bible doesn't honestly say what happened in that period of time. But nonetheless, at some point they both knew. They both knew. So Eve unfortunately was deceived by the serpent, you know, that being Satan. And she ate, she gave Adam some of the fruit to eat with her. And when they ate it, it says that the their eyes were both open, the scales fell off their eyes, and they realized they were naked. So they're sitting here just living life, no problem, being obedient. And the, just like God said, in the day thereof, thou shalt surely die. So in the day they ate it, the scales fell off their eyes and they both realized they were naked. You keep reading in Genesis and God asked, they hear him walking in the day and they hid themselves. God calls out to them and they're saying, well, we hid ourselves because we were naked. And God is saying, well, who told you you were naked? You know, that was something that wasn't even an issue before they ate of the fruit. So notice the fact that God said that in that day that they would surely die. Notice that Adam and Eve did not drop dead. They actually lived, I want to say, <clears throat> close to a thousand years, I want to say. But he says, in that day that thou shalt surely die. So how did they die? Spiritually, they fell. They died spiritually. It didn't take two days. It didn't take a week, a month, a year. It didn't take them to keep messing up and quote unquote live in a, in a, a life of sin you know the way we typically think of living in sin just you just messing up messing up just living for self it didn't take all that the moment they ate of one fruit maybe it was one bite i'm just going to assume it was just one bite they didn't even necessarily have to just consume it all just one bite and that was it so in that day they spiritually fell so now, if you believe you can lose salvation, it doesn't take all of that in order for one to lose salvation. The moment you do it, the moment you will lose it if that's the case. If you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 3, um, 12 through 15, Paul talks about the believers at the judgment seat of Christ. And he says, those things, those works, which are manifested in abiding fire, you'll receive reward for. But those things which are burned up, you will not receive reward for. Notice, Paul says, those things which abide in the fire, you'll receive reward for. When you do something for the Lord and you get a reward for it, the Lord's not going to take it back. But if you do something that's not for the Lord, the reward that you would have gotten, you would have missed out on it. So this is not a thing of here, let me give you something and now let me take it back. This is not that we and mind you, we're talking about spiritual, spiritual things. We're talking about spiritual things. We're not talking about. We're not talking about on a flesh level, on an earthly level, we're talking about a spiritual level. The Lord is not going to he does not take back his his gifts. Even the same way, Jesus Christ said, even if you give one of my little children a cup of water, in no wise will you lose your reward. He says, in, no, in other words, under no circumstance, in no way, shape, or form, you do something for me, you're not going to lose out on that reward. So why, when it comes to salvation, people are saying, well, you can lose it. You can lose it. I thought the gifts and callings of God were irrevocable without repentance. But even if you could, it doesn't take all of that. It doesn't take a whole, it doesn't take an illustrious rap sheet of sins in order for one to lose salvation. The moment you mess up, that's it. We even see in James 2, James says that you fail in one point of the law, you're guilty of a mog because the same one that said do not kill is the same one that said do, do not commit adultery. So it's not about following this this checklist is about following the one who gave the law. Same thing that God told to Saul. He says it is better. He says obedience is better than sacrifice. Okay, it's about following what God says. 
So the moment you alter from what God says, the moment you, you disobey him, that's it. You don't have to do a whole lot. So, and I've asked some of these people, do you still sin? And just from what I've seen, I've heard some people say they don't sin. I've heard that. But the ones who say they do still sin, you know, they say I don't necessarily live in it, but I do still sin. I can appreciate their honesty. But if they admit they still sin, then from what we've seen, that is enough. The moment you commit an act, that is enough. So I just wanted to make this video. I didn't, I didn't want it to be a long video, but I just want to make this video showing that if you could lose salvation, that it will happen instantaneously. It doesn't take a whole lot, but right then and there, you could lose it just as quickly as you get it. It is quick, quickly as you could lose it. Just like we see in Acts 10, the Jews saw the Gentiles gain salvation instantly. They heard the word, they believed it, and the Holy Spirit fell on them. And they started prophesying and speaking in tongues. And the Jews were astonished by this. That happened instantaneously. That was instant. So if you could lose it just as fast as you Got it is just as fast as you could lose it as we see what happened with Adam and Eve. And we know that, that that's a physical, we know that was a spiritual death because physically they didn't just drop dead. They didn't die that day physically, but spiritually they did. So I just wanted to make this video. I pray that God got the glory first and foremost out of it. And I pray whoever was meant to see this video will see it, be blessed and edified by it. So until next time, I love you all. And God bless.